Hey everyone, this is Pete, and welcome back to Atari A to Z, a series of short playthroughs of Atari 8-bit games, some which I grew up with and some which are new to me. Today is one of the former. Today we're taking a look at Airstrike, which was a 1982 release from English Software developed by Steve Riding. It was actually the first release from English Software and established an early positive reputation for the company. It was pretty well regarded at the time of its original release for being an excellent scramble-like game in the absence of an official port of Konami's classic. But it was somewhat overshadowed by its superior sequel, which I have a bit more experience with. It was marketed with advertising that positioned the game as being very, very difficult, which is an assessment that most modern commentators would probably agree with. So I'm not going to promise how far we're going to get with this game today. But anyway, let's go play Airstrike. Okay, here we are with Airstrike from English Software. Not a game I have a ton of experience with. Um, we definitely had the second one growing up. Um, and I remember that, but I have not played this first one a great deal, or at all, possibly. Uh, anyway, I know it's very, very difficult, uh, so I'm not promising we're going to get anywhere today, but let's give it a look anyway. So we hit start, and that takes us to this initial screen, and I think we can, yeah, we can change a few options from here. So we can press select to choose our skill level between one and five, and press option to choose between one or two players. And then hit start to go. <laughs> oh, excuse me. So here we are. Now we have a slightly awkward control scheme in this, in that you have to press the space bar to drop bombs. And the fire button to shoot missiles. Whoops. Um, and so you need to sort of really think about what weapon you're going to use when. Particularly because, particularly because, unlike quite a few other games of this, t oh god, <laughs> very very difficult. You see, uh, particularly because, unlike quite a few other games of this type, you have limited ammunition in this. You have a limited number of bombs, and you have a limited number of missiles, and those are represented by the B and the M counters down at the bottom of the screen. And bombing or shooting. Those A installations that you've seen provide you with more ammunition. And F, of course, provides you with that all-important fuel which is ticking down at the top of the screen. Whoops. Now, one of the trickiest things to get to grips with in this game is the fact that when you move left and right on the screen, you're also accelerating and decelerating. Oops. So you see the further right... Oh, God. You see the further right on the screen you go, the faster you go. So now you can actually use that to your advantage to a certain extent. So, for example, at the beginning here... We can just go all the way over to the right here and go wee across the top like that and 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 die. <laughs> but you can zip across that first bit and then slow down to deal with these missiles here. But you have to watch out for those sort of meteorite things that are moving a chunk at a time because they don't go up and down. They go down to the bottom and then they reset back to their top position. Oh, you can destroy them. I thought you couldn't destroy them, but it looks like you can get rid of them with a bomb. That makes things much easier. You, you can't destroy them with missiles, is the thing. That's what makes them quite tricky. So you need to have your hand ready on that space bar. Oh, I'm out of bombs. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, you can destroy them with missiles as well. Okay, I've been playing this wrong all along. Now, how do I hit that ammo dump without using a bomb? The answer is very carefully. Okay, there we go. Right. Knowing that I can just destroy these makes things much easier. 
Because I'd been working on the impression that you couldn't destroy them. But if you can, that makes life much, much easier. Oh no. Oh god. So you see, it's to your advantage in this to try and pick your target somewhat. Because yes, you can blast your way through a lot of these things, but... You've got your limited ammunition to bear in mind. Now, hitting those ammunition dumps does replenish both your bombs and your missiles up to full. There we go, that's sufficiently done. Can't hit that one easily, so... Again, let's try and fire through the middle there. That's a dead end there, so we do not want to go for that fuel dump. Oh, that's tight. That's very tight. Uh oh. Uh oh. Ooh. It's tight. It's very tight. Now, if I remember rightly, this part here, I think you can actually just go down here and. Oh no, you can't. You can't. That's upsetting. But we have reached a second skill level though. So we made it round an entire loop of airstrike. I've never done that before. I mean, I know I said I haven't played this game very much before, but I, I did test it out this morning before I started recording just to make sure that it, you know, works. And I was getting absolutely obliterated just by this first section. And so to actually successfully make it to a second loop feels significant. Particularly with anyone who writes anything about this game online going, Oh god, this game's too hard. Yes, it is hard. But, you know, it's based on an arcade game that was also very hard. <laughs> And you know what? As long as you are careful... As long as you are careful, this is not excessively difficult at all. This is about in line with what I would expect from a shoot 'em up of the period. I think this might be the bit you could fly underneath. Oh no! We did. That was a good score, though. Good score. Ooh, pressing help makes that flash like that. That's fun. Right, let's try again. Uh, skill one. Go from the beginning again. So our high score is 8,710 points. I couldn't really spot what was making skill level two harder than skill level one. Because it, it seemed mostly the same. Like, all the missiles were still launching. It's not like in... Stuff like Scramble and Caverns of Mars, where only certain ones the missiles launch. All of those missiles launch. As you get close to them. You'll notice there's actually quite an impressive amount of stuff going on on screen in this at once. And that's because it's not using sprites for a lot of things. We've got sprites for the player ship and for the missiles. But everything else, including the bombs, is uh, redefined characters. It's graphics characters. You can tell by sort of how chunkily they move down the screen. But it works. It works for what this game is doing. 
Uh-oh. Oh, no. Oh, there are checkpoints. I'm discovering new things about this game all the time. I thought it always set you back to the beginning of the level, which always seemed incredibly harsh, but, you know, it's it's not that mean. Oh, no, too low. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, dear. I'm quite liking this, actually. It's, uh, it is very much a decent Scrambler-like. And like I say, in the absence of an official port of Scramble at the time... People were very happy with this. Uh, I, I think I mentioned this a few weeks back, and I wasn't 100% uh, sure on the truth of it. But yes, uh, Paul Lay Playsoft has done a uh, Atari 8-bit version of Scramble now. Uh, and in fact, my good friend Rob over at Beyond the Scanlines has done a video on that recently. So if you want to see how that version looks, along with the Atari 7800 version, which was developed separately, how they look, uh, then I very much recommend giving those a look. Because they are, they are good versions of Scramble, but they're both quite distinct from one another. And it's interesting how the two versions uh, differ from one another in terms of whether they decide they want to be as true to the arcade version as possible with the tech of the time, or whether they want to be something that's a bit more optimized for the specific platform that it's being made for. There we go. Beautifully done, I'm sure you will agree. Get him in the middle, that seems to be the best way of handling that. And then carefully up here. Now see, the, the temptation is to just fly ahead. No! The temptation there is to just fly ahead, but because you speed up when you move to the right on the screen, that might not actually be the best idea. So I think there's, there's probably a good argument to be made for patience being a bit of a virtue in this game. So just take your time, keep over on the left hand side of the screen, replenish your fuel when you need to. Keep the speed down. There we go and blast safely through the middle like that. Okay, great. Thank you very much for the ammunition. I'm going to duck under here and avoid all of you. And here we are at level two. All right, let's see if we can make it another loop. Again, take your time, just be accurate. There's no need to rush. If you take your time, you actually have a, a lot more flexibility in how you're going to approach a lot of these situations. Uh oh. Ooh, that was close. I'm out of bombs. Oh no. Alright, we're going to have to improvise. And not use too many missiles here, because we've got loads of those gates to get through just ahead. So carefully navigate through this falling shitstorm. Oh no! Now we're back to the beginning. <laughs> Oh, I see how the skill level is affecting things. The skill level is not necessarily making the game itself harder, but it's limiting your amount of ammunition. So instead of starting with 10 bombs and 40 missiles, 
You start with 9 bombs and 36 missiles. So with each passing level you're going to have to be more and more selective about what you shoot. shoot. Or you can just die. I got much higher score though, 13,360. One more try. One more try, because I think we're discovering some fun hidden depths to this game. Alright, skill one. Off we go. You see, there down at the bottom, we've got 10 booms and one and 40. Mm. And that's what that replenishes to when we shoot an ammo dump. But assuming we get back to level two this time around, you will see that our maximum number of booms will drop to nine and our maximum number of mm will drop to 36. Which is interesting because it means you'll have to play a lot more tactically. But it may also reduce your scoring potential because it, if you can't shoot as many things then surely you can't score as many points because you, you don't get points for progressing in this. You don't get points for actually going the distance, I don't think. Maybe there's a multiplier on the score for the level. Alright, again, take our time. Uh oh. Uh oh. Whew. Oh, you can't hit that one. You just have to time your bomb throw nicely. Alright, and up. And then this is the bit where we need to take our time again. Just zip down there, fire through the middle. Oh no, 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 no! Oh, that was a disaster. Oh dear, it's all going horribly wrong. Oh, it's fine. Everything's fine. Again, carefully, slowly, slowly, gently. Uh-oh. No, oh, no, it's all over. One, one more try. One. Actually, no, I'll tell you what. Let's bump up the difficulty to three and see what that does. So now we've got eight bombs and 32 missiles. So now we're going to need to be even more selective about what we shoot and bomb. Only four bombs left, so let's save those for a minute. I've got 20 missiles, so that's plenty to be getting on with some shooting. But we do want this. There we go. Using the spacebar to drop bombs isn't as inconvenient as I thought it would be. As long as you're sort of holding your controller vaguely near your keyboard, which I am, then it's fine. And if you're playing on an emulator, you can probably always even assign the spacebar to a button on your controller if you feel that strongly about it. I've got enough ammo. It'll be fine. It'll be fine, won't it? It'll all be fine. 
14 missiles is plenty because there's an ammo and a fuel dump coming up soon. Uh oh. Oh no! Well, that's one way of replenishing. And but but missed. <laughs> Never mind. The only slight issue with this is there's a very slight um, lag on the firing controls. It's almost like there's a sort of cooldown between uh, each shot. Or perhaps more accurately, I think probably the fire button is only being pulled every so often. Which means that you can't rapid fire. Oh no! Oh no, we're back here again. There we go. That's how you do that. So just making sure you're as accurate as you can. And making sure you bear that that little bit of lag slash cooldown into account when you're taking aim for things. Right, watch out for that meteor. Oh, I missed the, missed the ammunition. Now, maybe you do get more points, because I got 8,040 points without getting all the way through the stage there. Let me just let me just compare and contrast. So, skill level 1. We were getting 30 points for shooting a missile in that level. Okay, maybe... Oh, it varies depending on if you shoot the missile on the ground or if it's in flight. Okay, so that, that doesn't really help matters. <laughs> Well, I guess we're having another go, anyway. Oh dear. Right, well, let's just try and zip through this bit then. Oh no, oh no, that's good. We'll just we'll just reset to the start of the level. That's cool. Oh, I've lost the touch. I'm trying to rush, that's the problem. I say, this game, all about patience, taking your time. Taking your time. No need to rush. Everything's moving at a set, predictable pace. I say, all you need to do is make sure that you are in line with that pace, and you'll be fine. There we go, that's better, isn't it? Now, let's let's just see. Yeah, you can. You absolutely can. See ya! <laughs> yeah, the only reason I, I bring that up is that 
I was looking this game up on Atari Mania and one of the comments on the page was to do with that. I remember a bit where you can fly under the level and just not have to do anything. And yes, that's true. Uh, well, that is true. You're not scoring any points for doing that because you're not shooting anything. But, you know, if you want to skip that annoying bit, then, well, you can. So anyway, I think that's enough to give us a good idea of how Airstrike works. Um, that's a decent game, actually. Um, I've always sort of put off exploring this one because I know the second one is regarded as a much better game than this. But that's perfectly solid, perfectly competent, perfectly enjoyable. There's not a lot to it because there's just that one level and it gets gradually harder by reducing your ammunition as you go through. But that sort of pure arcade game style for the early 80s, perfectly in keeping with a lot of other games around at the time. So yeah, I don't see anything wrong with that at all. And yeah, very much a strong start for the English software company who, as we've talked about on a number of previous videos, went on to become... Uh, a very well respected name in British development and publishing throughout the 8-bit area, particularly for Atari computers. They did branch out onto some other platforms at various points, but I think they are probably most widely beloved by fans of the Atari 8-bits purely because they were one of the people who supported that platform more than anyone else uh, in the UK. So yeah, good job. Good job. I enjoyed that. All right, we'll leave that there for now. As always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again next time.